Good evening. I'm Christopher Michael. Tonight we talk with two members of the Cook County Board of Commissioners and find out where they stand on the issues and see what they've been doing during this time, during their term. They are in alphabetical order Pete Silvestri and Larry Sefferton. By way of background, those of you may not be real familiar with the members of the County Board and so a little bit of background on them. Pete Silvestri is to my right, to your left. He is serving his fourth term as a member of the County Board at age 53. However, his life in the public eye started when he was only 20 years old when he was on the school board of district number 401. He serves more on more committees than any other member of the County Board of Commissioners and other commissioners say he's the hardest working man on the Cook County Board. He lives in Elmwood Park. Now to my left and your right, Larry Suffredin. He is in his second term on the Cook County Board. As Pete Silvestri is, Larry Sufferden is a lawyer. He's built a reputation for being a government relations specialist. He's been a lawyer for nearly three decades and served as captain in the United States Air Force Reserves. He lives in Evanston. Gentlemen, thank you for joining us. Thank you. Starting with you, Commissioner Silvestri, what are the issues the County Board performs or the jobs they perform for the people of Cook County. Many people are really unfamiliar with what you do. Well, uh, thank you for that and thank you for this opportunity to be with you this evening. Uh, the County Board is really the representative government, the legislative government of the Cook County government, the legislative branch of the Cook County government. Uh, there are 17 commissioners who represent districts. I represent the 9th district, which starts here in Morton Grove and Niles and goes south to Oak Park and River Forest. Uh, we are responsible for a $3 billion budget. Uh, workforce of about 24,000 people. Uh, about 50% of the, of the work we do deals with uh, public safety, 40 to 50%, and about 40% is public health. Uh, we also uh, do, do a myriad of other things with the other 10% or the other 20%, depending on how you define it. Uh, but we, we operate the largest uh, court system in America, in the world. We operate a uh, large public hospital with two other hospitals and clinics throughout the county. Uh, we operate a, a, one of the largest public forest preserve systems in the country. Uh, so our work is, is very varied and very interesting. Uh, right now, obviously, the biggest issue we're facing is finances, like all of the governments. Uh, and it really boils down to two options. Either you raise revenue, which is a nice way to say raise taxes, uh, or you cut costs and you make government more efficient. We've been trying to do that. We've been trying to cut costs, make government more efficient. As you know, uh, Cook County for a while had a very high sales tax, and we've worked to reduce that by reducing a half cent from that, and we hope to work towards reducing the other half cent that was imposed under the Stroger administration in the last couple of years. So uh, we're working towards making government more efficient. We're working towards uh, cutting costs so that we do not have to add an additional tax burden, and I would, would be very much opposed to it, as I've always been opposed uh, to raising revenue in these recessionary times. It's just not the right time. Uh, I don't know when the right time is to raise taxes, but certainly not uh, during a recession as we are currently facing. So that's our goal for the new term. Cut costs, make government more efficient, work with the new president. As you know, uh, we will have a new president regardless of who wins uh, the November election. Uh, and I think that we have a good uh, impetus to really move Cook County forward. Uh, when I was first elected, Cook County was sort of an unknown government. People did not know what Cook County did. Uh, it was kind of a uh, uh, retirement spot for public officials who left the city council or the state legislature and became county commissioners. Uh, that, in 1994, the, the county was divided into districts for the first time in the history of Cook County. There were two districts before that, let me rephrase that, city and suburban. After that, there were 17 districts created, and I think that makes for more accountability, more representative government, and it's going to make for a good uh, effort in this new term to get things done to represent our people better, to make sure our tax dollars are better spent. One of the things you mentioned is trying to trim costs and make things more efficient. In a government as large as the county government, with a budget as large as your budget is, where do you even begin? Well, you, you begin across the board. As you know, county government is a, a collection of different elected offices. We, the legislative branch is the 17-member board, but all of us in Cook County elect a president, and we also elect people like the sheriff, the assessor, the county clerk, the treasurer, uh, just a variety of uh, public officials that are all responsible for their own budget, for their own staff. I believe it's the role of the county government to say, this is what we have, now let's figure out how we split it up 
and let's figure out how we make the cuts. You, Madam Treasurer, you, Mr. Sheriff, you, Madam uh, State's Attorney, are elected to tell us how you can cut your budget. And if you don't, we will. And that would be a different result. But we still have to reduce the budget because there's just not uh, enough to go around anymore. All right. We're going to move our discussion now to Larry Sufferden. And Commissioner Sufferden, you work uh, to a great degree with the Forest Preserve District. And the Forest Preserve District for people in Morton Grove is something that's very, very familiar to them. Right. Well, um, with Peter, I, I share representation of Morton Grove. I represent everything east of Harlem in Morton Grove. And so the Forest Preserves, St. Paul Woods, Linnae Woods, and Harms Woods, uh, along with the Chick Evans uh, Golf Course, are within uh, my district. And um, with friends of the Morton Grove Forest Preserves, that trustee John Thill is one of the leaders of here in town, we've done a lot of work in trying to restore all of these uh, three forest preserves. And by restoration, I mean we try to get rid of the invasive plants, the buckthorn, the garlic mustard that have invaded our forest preserves and, and taken away the native plants. Uh, with Kent Fuller, who's the master steward at St. Paul Woods, we've done a lot of recouping of seeds and replanting of the open areas when you're driving uh, on the uh, western end of St. Paul Woods and you, you get to see the beautiful uh, grasses that are out there that are the native uh, grasses. But, you know, as Peter said, you know, the, the, the county is not really well known and the forest preserve is, is one of the things that's not as well known. We have 68,000 acres of land. There's no other local unit of government that owns that much preserved land in the whole United States. And it, it, we have the river trails that come through, the bike trails that come through Morton Grove. And one of the nice parts about this job is to be able to work with all the various groups who want to either help us improve the forest preserve or just want to come out and have a picnic or go hiking. We have the stables here in Morton Grove. You know, it's one of the few places within the, the county of Cook where people have horses still and you can watch them ride. And so I've spent a lot of time in, in my time on the board working with these volunteers and, and trying to understand this uh, forest preserve system. And that's a rather large army of people who have to take care of the forest preserves. Now we have a, a relatively small workforce, it's a little bit under uh, 400 people, but we have each year we get a report and just the volunteers up this way and the volunteers from Morton Grove, there's almost 400 of them. And they're people who are out there on a regular basis and the number of hours they do. Your, your local schools, we have gates that are behind the schools that go into the forest preserve. And people like Marion Thill, uh, John's wife, is very active in doing programs with the local school children. So there's a real involvement in this community with the forest preserves. I've, I've been part of, for the last eight years, a New Year's Day paddle on the uh, Chicago River. We start at Willow Road and we end here in Morton Grove. And, uh, you know, there are last year 400 people who joined us in canoes and kayaks. And all of them got off here in Linnae Woods. And uh, we had a, a marvelous time in celebrating New Year's Day very early in the morning. A lot of the people in Morton Grove weren't up yet. But, uh, you know, a year ago we had a, someone who fell in the river during ours and uh, was uh, actually got lost from the rest of the groups and crawled out of the river didn't know where to go, knocked on a door in Morton Grove, and fortunately one of the employees of the village of Morton Grove actually answered the door and, and saved that person's life. And this will be a much easier thing once they finish the uh, boat launch they're putting in there right, right back with road. Absolutely. Well, we will return in just a moment, and when we come back we'll have more questions for Commissioner Larry Suffren and also uh, Pete Silvestri after this.